If you watch the channel, you'll know that I absolutely love estate cars. My first car was an estate, and if it's a fast estate, it's even better. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about five estate cars that are super fast and cost less than 15,000 pounds. If you like estates too, hit the like button and hit subscribe as well. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> I'll be real with you, the first car I'm going to talk about on this list isn't one I wanted to include from a moral perspective, but I didn't want to be exposed as a new Mini hater, so here it is. The Mini Clubman JCW, an estate version of the Mini Hatch JCW. Now I can appreciate as much as the next classic Mini fan that there was the estate or bread van version of the old Mini 2, also called the Clubman, so this is a modern day recreation, but the size will always be something that triggers me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Putting my biases to one side though, the JCW is a properly cool little estate with its 1.6 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine making 208 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds not bad for a car that has been increased in size by 260 litres over the standard mini hatch it gets all the performance parts you would expect of the mini hatch JCW too in fact from the B pillar forward they are exactly the same car it's just that it's been lengthened including its wheelbase to fit that extra space in and then comes with the additional suicide doors at the back the boot also is isn't a hatchback, it's the double swing doors or barn doors which is again in line with the classic Mini. So while it does stay true to its predecessor in terms of these features which I have huge respect for, it is a far bigger car which is of course in line with the needs of consumers today. These are listed anywhere from around the £10,000 mark while 15 grand will get you a 2012 model with 60k on the clock. Ideally try to get as late a model as you can as the earlier ones came with the N14 engine known for the dreaded timing chain death rattle. The N18 block on later models is known to be far more reliable so definitely try to go that way. Next up we're moving on to a bit of a fan favourite given it's quite a rare car with fewer than 130 of them out on the roads right now in the UK. It's the VW Passat R36 which comes with a 3.6 litre VR6 engine which produces 295 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.6 seconds helped by the fact that it's all wheel drive or in VW's words for motion. During the 2000s VW let their R division typically focused on motorsport run wild with the VW road cars which is how we got the first and second Golf R32s and then of course this Passat R36 which is inspired by VW's involvement in motorsport and taking the brand to a level above the typical GTI performance cars. This enabled VW to stay true to the GTI badge in that GTIs could still offer a more usable level of power and performance while the R cars could go a step further and be a bit more silly. In this sense the R36 is a proper VW car in every way, that DSG gearbox, the R badging all around the car, the more aggressive body kit including the front and rear splitters and spoilers and of course the sportier interior all of which come together to make a properly nice overall package in my books. It comes with both a saloon and estate but the estate is the cooler model in my opinion and it paved the way for the Golf R estate we see on the roads today. You have to remember though this is a cruiser not a fully focused track weapon or anything like that so owners have said it's tuned more towards comfort than out and out handling hence it's known to be very comfortable to drive but not very engaging. These are only around £11,000 at the bottom end and 15 grand is enough for a 2009 model with 70,000 miles on it. The main horror stories on these are engine chains and then mechatronic ECU problems affecting the DSG which are pretty common as are electronic handbrake failures. Whenever I think of the VXR badge or OPC badge if you're not in the UK I think of the Astra or the Corsa and maybe if I'm pushing it I think of the funnier ones like the Mariva but rarely have I considered this, the Vauxhall Insignia VXR Estate and that's a shame because it comes equipped with a 2.8 litre turbocharged V6 engine that makes 320 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.6 seconds, matching the Passat, also helped by it being all-wheel drive. But this really shouldn't have come as a surprise given the Insignia picked up where the Vectra left off and that had a VXR model available with the more classic VXR stylings you'd find across the older models. This Insignia instead is more reminiscent of the second Astra VXR in its stylings and it has the same engine block as the older Vectra. Like the VW it came as both a saloon and estate and again like the VW I think the estate looks cooler. Either way you benefit from a very smooth but muscular body kit, quite understated and sleeperish, especially in comparison to the previous generation of VXR cars. It can come as both a manual or automatic, which are mated to Saab's Haldex all-wheel drive system, which then goes through an LSD for the rear wheels to support handling, which is paired with adaptive suspension, which comes with three modes, depending on how sporty your feet.
feeling. The interior too is okay. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the dashboard as I think it looks a bit dated and overall design is a tad boring, but the sports seats are very nice. There are definitely nicer interiors on this list, but I'll let you be the judge. You'll find these listed for a minimum of around £10,000 and £15,000 will get you into a 2013 model with 80k on it. Clutch issues are known on these as well as a few ECU related electrical issues and though forums are generally a little cautious around the reliability record on these, outside of what I've mentioned, other issues I could find have been more bespoke than common. So hope you the video. If you are, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. And let me know in the comments down below what your personal favourite estate of all time is. I'll let you know mine at the end of the video. Given estates are supposed to be practical for transporting family and things around, fuel economy definitely comes into the equation when you're considering buying. That's why I had to get a diesel onto the list. In this case, the BMW 335D, which is supposed to manage around 48 miles per gallon thanks to its 3 litre twin turbocharged inline six engine, which makes 308 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.3 seconds, pretty strong stuff. In true BMW fashion, given it primarily comes as a saloon, it's not actually called the 535D estate, but the touring instead, in line with many BMW estates of the past. In fact, if you want to hear more about the history of BMW estates, check out my video on the ridiculously cool story of how the E30 touring came to exist. But either way, knowing that the prices of previous generation M5 tourings have been going up and up over recent years, and the M3 tourings are released as well, it's becoming more difficult to get your hands on fast BMW estates for a reasonable price. This is probably one of the more boring BMW estates that you can buy, but then at the same time, it's still ridiculously performant, which for me helps it gain sleeper status. The interior is also pretty good on these, as they're a bit more modern, you can get a few more creature comforts in there in terms of tech, which definitely gives the car better long-term use if you genuinely want it to be your daily driver, which some of the other cars on this list lack. And to be honest, given there's no touring M5 in this generation, this is about as good as it gets from an estate perspective, meaning you'll literally have the fastest BMW 5 Series estate on the market from that generation. Thanks to you, this is the cheapest car on the list, starting at £8,500, while 15 grand will get you a 2016 model with 100,000 miles on it. Cam chain stretching has been a problem for some owners, and there have been some catastrophic bearing failures, but more common stuff is the DPF clogging up from continuous short journeys. Taking the top spot on this list is probably the most recognisable fast estate badge on the road, the first generation Audi RS6, which absolutely violates every other car on this list in terms of performance. That's mostly because it comes with a 4.2 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine, which puts 443 brake horsepower through its four wheels, taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds, mind-boggling stuff out of a car that has 455 litres of luggage space. Even though it's considered to be the fastest estate from the Audi brand, it's important to remember it's actually the fourth car to come out of Quattro GmbH, with the godfather of course being the R32 which paved the way for this to exist. It's not even the second estate from the company to follow on from that car, as the RS4 arrived in 2000 just after the S6 Plus. But it certainly got the formula correct, with that massive engine, all that power and performance, and the stunning looks with beefier wheel arches, aggressive angles and the likes. It still maintained a level of being understated, and at the time, given no RS6 had come before it, the hype hadn't started, so it must have come across as a bit of a sleeper out on the roads. It doesn't just go fast though, Audi put a bunch of R&D into making this car handle like a performance car and not just a family estate, with the Torsen all-wheel drive setup being top quality for the time, plus the 8-piston Brembo calipers paired with radially ventilated discs, and of course all the Bosch tech you could imagine to effectively put all the different forces produced by your feet down to the road. The starter around the £12,000 mark now, and for £15,000 you'll be getting a 2003 model with 90,000 miles on it. The dynamic ride control is known to leak and fail, and timing belt changes are also known to be an expensive job. The gearboxes have also been the source of some issues for owners, and intercoolers have been known to leak with age. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. I said I would tell you what my favourite estate is. It might be, I, it changes all the time, but probably the C6 RS6 with the V10 engine. Unbelievable car. But there are definitely some that I'm missing, so let me know yours in the comments down below. Huge thanks for watching as the page for their support, and if you want to watch another video on some fast estates that are slightly more expensive, then click up here and subscribe down here.